Thank you very much, Quickshot. And that was actually what we wanted to start with talking about. And as you said, it's like the Kog'Maw. He is so good on those skill shots and, and controlling that power of evil. Talk me through the virus pick. I mean, you've hinted at it before, but to pull it out also in the very first game, that is sending a message. Well, yeah, but it was the perfect setup. He told me before the games, okay, when do you want to play the Vars? And he said, well, you can't really tell they played against Assassins, but if they are picking Vladimir or Kassadin, then it's just the perfect thing because Vars is an AD carry. And an AD carry in general performs fairly well against the Kassadin. But pulling it out on the grand stage in the finals, after this day, everyone will know his name. P-O-E. <laughs> Well, a um, couple of other things in picks and bans before we continue. Fnatic drawing the card of banning out Hillisang. We've sung his praises throughout the quarterfinals, the semifinals, double MVP, Morgana and Annie banned, and first picking Thresh. It doesn't matter. He can do the same on Brown. Yeah, no, his Brown player is actually really good. We don't see a lot of Brom nowadays, uh, but it actually works really well. Uh, back in Alliance, we used Brom in our double AD comp, which was Stana in the mid lane. So it makes complete sense when you have an auto attack on the mid lane to supplement the Brom passive, which is going to apply that stun. And he played it very, very well. His unbreakable shields were good, and it was a, it was a Hillisang performance. <laughs> yeah, it was definitely a Hillisang performance. You take away the Fresh, you take away the Morgana, but you have to assume that the opponent's going to ban it, especially Fnatic, who have always a smart picks and bans. So you take that weak, you practice another champion, and the Braum fits this perfect. They have skill shots, they have chase potential, they have everything. And they win with the Varus, so you know you're going to get your hands on Morgana or Thresh or Annie again, probably. But that's looking ahead. Let's look a little closer at this game again, because when you talk about teams winning the game or other teams losing the game, the Baron call from Fnatic, even though that is their signature move, this time it was too risky. Yeah, it is definitely a Let's signature move. Let's pull the ripple up on the Let's screen so we can the take a look up. immediately so as well. If you're playing against Fnatic, you know they're going to go for an early 20 minute dragon, uh, Baron. Sometimes right when it spawns, sometimes at the 26 minute mark. It's right in between. Unicorns just secure the dragon, and we can play the replay right now. Fnatic is grouped up in the pit, so it's perfect for the Varus to just poke them down. And don't forget, at this point, it's 20 minutes in the game. Baron does a huge amount of damage to your team if you're grouped up. And it's very easy to analyze these different types of team comps. So if uh, Fnatic is looking for an engage, they want to find an engage where both teams are at 100% health so they can bring their damage in uh, and when they can out overpower them in a 10, 15 second fight. And what Unicorns of Love is going to look for is some sort of engage where they're already able to apply some poke to the enemy team. Baron applied that poke for them. They cannot afford to take these risks because all they had to do was move around the map find you all setting up for an objective and take a fight. This game should have been theirs. Yep, absolutely. Uh, until up in that moment, actually, they did play it pretty well, and Unicorns of Love made a wrong call when they tried to push top lane. They hadn't had the win uh, Winion, Minion control, Winions in some cases, as in their game a couple of weeks ago. But um, looking ahead, I feel for Fnatic, they can really analyze it being that mistake. They shouldn't have done it. But their flanks were actually on point when it did succeed with the cast and with the Rek'Sai. Well, if you're the coach of Fnatic right now, what are you going to do? First of all, was the Vars really the problem? I don't know, the Varus, like, the Kog'Maw does the same. He's standing in the back row, safe positioning, applying lots of damage to you and poking you. So there are a lot of champions who work, like, pretty similar to the Varus. The other parts, the Dragon Control of Unicorns of Love were just absolutely astounding. That first Dragon at six minutes was absolutely perfectly played out. They engaged before them, pulled them away from the scene, secured it. And after that, it was just a perfectly planned out Dragon Control game. Uh, you have to do something about that. You have to get the first Dragon. So, yeah. And I think one of the things that you can do to get the first dragon is put a greater emphasis on drafting a strong 2v2 lane. Uh, the Callista build, I believe, was questionable. Uh, you went Blade of the Rune King into Bloodthirster. I don't really know what that's meant to accomplish. Uh, so what I want to see out of this next game is Fnatic putting a greater emphasis on that winning 2v2 lane so they can send their dual lane to the bottom to give them that greater dragon control. Yep. Uh, we touch on the dragon control, but to me it's almost like Sheepy has this booklet. Okay, what haven't we done before? The adaptation in Best of Fives, we know we can do that. Adapting to the way the other team plays, we can do that. Let's go for dragon control, guys. It's got to be pretty intimidating to know, okay, what is the next step here? Yeah, the next step, like, they showed that they can scale into the late game and win games in late game. But they know if they want to scale against a team like Fnatic, they will have the better cards. So Fnatic will take that late game scaling game. So they have to put as much pressure as possible in the early game. And they did that. They had dragon control. They had objective control. They reacted perfectly to the early towers that, that Fnatic took. It was just... Like, they did some practice. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and if I was uh, Unicorns of Love, I would just run it again. Same pick, same strategy. If they make the bands, find the champions that fill the similar roles. 
and wait until Fnatic says, hey, we can show we can beat this because the way Fnatic played this game is not the way you play to beat that style of composition. Yeah, we know Fnatic, how good they are from the regular season, so they will be able to pick themselves up. We hope so, at least. I think that sums it up for this game, and we just want to see the next one. So coming up next is game two as Fnatic looks to even out the score at one win each. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in three and a half. Fnatic, they're coming in for potentially the first kill of the finals. Yellowstar taking up the turret, but there's the damage. It's gonna be first blood that goes to Rainover. Sure, that's a flash forward from Hillisang. Throws down the Fisher. Now Fnatic trying to peel away. Power of Evil. He's just throwing out a piercing arrow, but I don't know if it's enough. Bardex threw down on the hunt. It's already timed out. Yellowstar lobbed onto the unicorn's backline. That's a double kill for Hooney Hooney Hooney. Unicorns are on their way. Let's see what they can do. Kickers does not have flash available. Piercing arrow goes out. Rainover go in. and Hooney are going low. Hillisang got glacial fish. Baron is going down. Who gets the kill? Kick it! Goes to kick it! The unicorns of love! Please!